everyone else at the mm. moment. All right. Well, let's finish off uh, talking about the transfer window. Three days to go until the window slam shut. We have brought two in, in Radu Dragushin and Timo Werner on loan. We've got out Eric Dyer. And who else did we get out? A load of loan players. Phillips. Uh, and a load of, load of loan players. Perisic with his ACL. I mean, Ash, have we done enough this window, do you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> You know what? It's mad, isn't it? It's a techie one. I like the question. It's a good one. Um, and I, I always say it depends on your expectation as a fan. Um, I wasn't expecting um, too much to be done, but I was surprised with the whole Eric Dyer situation. That one caught me off guard. Werner wasn't expecting. Was he the type of signing that Spurs would do? Yes. You know, a freebie. That's what we do, you know low risk in terms of like wages and whatnot. Um, Dragusun, we got that one over the line. We needed a centre back and we actually pulled that one out the bag. I thought that was a massive coup, especially with uh, Bayern Munich lurking around. They could have taken him at any point. And if the guy decided that, you know, he's going to stick, he's going to be loyal to his word. And I, I think Ange had a lot to do with that. I think he's got on the phone and he, he managed to convince the lad that, you know, he's going to get enough time here. And, but... Then we kind of pivot towards a certain Norwegian kid by the name of Nusa. Now, I know it's not done yet. Gas levels <laughs> decreasing as you're speaking, Ash. <laughs> oh, please. Hey. Hey, <laughs> right now. I, so, I was like, you know, we're talking about the whole winger situation. We finally linked with a player that can go on the outside, that can go on the inside, that can get his head up, has the through balls in them, blah, blah, blah albeit at a lower level because i'm like what are we trying to be are we the team that wants players with potential are we doing a brighton and brentford are we doing a brighton and brentford are we doing that or are we buying players that that are known you know what i'm saying are we we've never quite been the marquee but we do spend money if that makes sense we spent money on richarlison we spent money on brendan johnson but it's like we, we, I don't know what Spurs' plan is. I thought if we're going to do the Brentford thing, then buy your nooses, buy the um, the, the teams, the players that aren't quite known. I'm here for it. I thought that was the project, so I was excited for it. Now I'm not too sure what we're actually doing. Like, we're linked to now uh, a, a Gallagher Johnson, not Gallagher Johnson, Gallagher. <laughs> we're linked to Gallagher, um, and they're talking crazy money, but again. If Ange wants him, like, is are the club looking to back him fully? Is that going to be one of those talking points come summer? Are we backing Ange because those are the players that he wants? Do you know what I'm saying? Are we going to miss out? So coming back to your question, the January thing, it's like, it's a bit of a mere. I'm not going to lie. It's, meh. I was excited and now... We've man, done more than pretty much every club in the Premier League, though. I, we have, but it's... We should it's, do more. It's, it's Hoiberg still here, bro. Huh? That's what it is. That's what that's, it leaves with that type of taste in your mouth. We're like, oh, if Hoiberg left, and 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 I know it's a lot to ask for. And then we got a player in that was better. I don't want a player that matches his level. I want a player that can take us to the next level. Do you know what I'm mm. trying to say? And my thing is, why can't we do a bit of both? Why can't we buy a player that is a project? that has that potential, that is like a Matoma that no one's heard of, and actually buy a top baller that everyone knows, and then all the teams are like, oh, shit. Look what Tottenham just bought. Oh, my days. Like, and all the fans are celebrating. You know, like when Van der Van saw, when Van der Van, 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 Van der Vaart signs, it was like a party. Like, everyone was excited. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a proven mm -hmm. play. I want that feeling as a fan. Again, I know it's January, and people are saying, no, slow down because we need to save some of the you money. You never had a Timo Werner before. <laughs> <laughs> Ash, just, take, just, just go back in time four years and pretend we just signed Timo Werner. <laughs> I'll send you a YouTube compilation. We'll get inside. <laughs> Don't listen, worry. Listen. I, I'm done with the ifs. Why not just get the brother that can do it now and everybody knows he could. And it might hurt, but at least you bought that player that is certified 100% is going to do the damn thing. That's what we want. Mm. That's what we want. Fans and we know that's going to help push us into that next. I don't want to be the nearly men all the time. I don't want to be the bridesmaid. I want to be the bride. You know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> as wild as it says, it sounds, I want us to kind of show that real ambition. Not, I feel like it's fake love right now. And that's what we're doing. So mm. 
I, why can't we have both? Why can't we have the money? The FFP, the 400 million spare or whatever. The, I, we sold Kane. There's like, you know what I'm saying? I think that's why some of our signings, we're, we're critiquing them so much because we're like, right, we sold a big boy Kane and we're replacing it with duds. You know what I mean? But if you had something else to go with it, then at least the fans would be like, all right, at least they're trying. At least the club, the board, whatever you want to call it, at least they're trying. Do you know what I'm saying? But we just don't feel the same love. It's just not... Co- and that's the why I'm like, this January, it, it's it's like, Spurs, this is what Spurs would do to you. Deadline day, you're going to be waiting. 10.59, like Santa's coming down the chimney. You're waiting for that present. It gets to 11 o'clock, February the 1st, and nothing's come through the door. You're deflated. That is... You'll get a contract renewal. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So I'm like, brother, like... The pain is, is like, allow us, isn't it? Like, just give us something that we can <laughs> live for, you know, get excited for, lift the fan base, you know. Uh, and just doing an amazing job, by the way. So that's what we've got at the moment. He's our, He's been our best signing, if I'm being honest. Yeah. It would be nice if he was complimented with the actual tools to do his job. And that's why I'm thinking at the moment, yeah, Hoiberg wants to stay. Uh, I don't know if I, I don't know about this, this window. I know we got rid of Dyer, but it's like six and a half, man. I don't know. Six Five. and a half. Do you, do you reckon any more business can be done before the end of the nah, window? I don't think so. I'm a, I'm a non-believer. <laughs> I'm <so laughs> but I'm just being honest. Like I just don't think, and I want to. I'm saying it because I want to be proved wrong. You know, like everyone was guessing about Man City. Yeah, we're gonna do Man City. Yeah, we're gonna do Man City. I was like, oh, let's first do this. You know <laughs> I'm trying to do the opposite. I'm trying to say this window is not quite it. I'm hoping that you know. It gets better, but bro, I don't, I don't know, I don't think so, man. Hoiberg says he wants to stay, so I think um, he 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 might be able to help us uh, uh, this season, you know, with some vital through balls and goals. <laughs> it's true, it's true. <laughs> well, Harry Wick's back. Is that what you want? <laughs> I think um, you're 100. percent You're 100 right in what you're saying. You know, when Spurs fans get gassed, it always gets thrown back in our face. I mean, me and Sim were so excited for this Man City game. The first thing I said to him when he picked me up in the car was, "You know exactly what happens when we get that excited," and and that's what happened on the football pitch on um, on the weekend. But David, you said we haven't done enough uh, before. What more would you like to see? Look, I think coming into this window, we had a golden opportunity to try and maybe flex our muscles a little bit this January. Forget about what other clubs are doing. Let's focus on the opportunities that we had and stuff like that. I just feel like we haven't done enough in certain areas. I think centre-back, I mean, I'm not going to have to sit here and complain about that anymore, which I suppose we are talking TV fans are very happy about because I've been doing that for about four years now. Um Dave, so I heard you were having, I heard you had a, a whole week party for Eric Dyer's uh, evacuation. Oh, look, you know, I, I did. I did. I had to go quiet for, for I couldn't go on camera and you know, I was busy celebrating it. Uh, by the way, I mean, I know it's petty of me, but as as a football fan, as as people know, I'm a, I, I absolutely love Tottenham till its core. Uh, I was absolutely delighted we got one over on them on this window. I know it doesn't make up for the fact that they took Kane, but just the fact that we managed to sell them a dud um, is absolutely brilliant. I love that sort of pettiness. I feel like I've got one back on them. Um but look, I think I think across the back line, I think we're okay. Um, look, I, I, I hazard I hazard a guess now that Hoiberg's staying. I don't think you'll see a centre midfielder signing sort of come in here. I think the hopes was you'd be able to maybe flog a Lasso or or a Hoiberg, and then you you'd bring one in here. That doesn't look like it's going to happen. For me, I would like to see us if there's an option coming up late in the window in in the attacking areas, maybe a right winger. Or with Son coming back, I would like to see us maybe pull the trigger on it because I do think that could be the difference between us maybe making top four or not or even trying to get ourselves in to try and push the top two in terms of a title challenge. I think it could really make a difference. Look, I feel a bit let down, to be honest with you, because I think initially we got off to a very good start. You're like, here we go, Tottenham attacking the window with a bit of purpose. You know, you look at all the players gone out. There's, what, about three, 400,000 worth of wages freed up. Larissa 110, Dyer 80, Perisic 170. We've got a lot of high earners off. And you're looking at it going, could we? Is there a big is there a big signing coming in before the end of the window? The opportunity's there. And I know everyone's sort of looking at us saying, hold back to the summer. Everyone's in financial troubles. Um, you know, we can take advantage there. 
But six months is a long time for teams to be able to work out different ways around the rules, circumvent the rules, and generate more cash so that they can move in the summer. I'm now looking at, and it's probably a bit late that I'm probably saying this, but I'm now looking at it going, well, with the fact that everyone's so quiet this window, was this window the window that we should have went and said 70 million were taking them? Seven, because clubs would have had no option but to accept that, um, to, in 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 order to sort of, um, you know, get their accounts in order and stuff like that. So I think maybe we probably missed out on an opportunity this January. I think, like I said, in terms of outgoings, and that, I, I, I'm very happy with. But in terms of incomings, I just feel like. Maybe we've missed an opportunity this window that might might or might not be there in the summer, but six months is a long time for clubs to be able to get their way around it and balance their books so that they can move and stuff like that. So, uh, look, I think it's been an OK window. I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to slate it, but I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to, you know, praise it either. I think I think it's just been sort of OK. What I will say is the amount of outgoings that we've had and the wages we've offloaded, it does allow us to move very early in the summer and attack that without having to sort of sell players first. Um, so we'll wait and see how it goes. But yeah, I'd like another four player in here before the end of the window. But I do want to say, because I know some people are going to say, Dave, being very negative today. Look, the Man City result has affected me a lot, first of all. And I am actually very happy with the business that Tottenham have done over the last few years in terms of incomings, outgoings and stuff like that. But I just want it done a bit quicker. I'm sick of always having to do it the slow way, the, the, the sort of, um, yeah, just the slow way. I'm absolutely sick of it. I just want to sort of, bam, there you are. Let's get it done. Let's let's go with a bit of gusto about it. Um, but it looks like we'll probably have to wait till the summer. Um so we'll wait and see what happens then. But Dave, three three days left, right? Um, all the wages that you mentioned are off the book. We've got one spot that's been freed up for the for a foreign player, for a non homegrown player to come in. Do you not think that we can do maybe just one more surprise signing before the end of the window? Look, we can sign as many players as we want before the end of the window. We're in a position financially to be able to do it in a, in, in terms of wages. We're in a, in, in a great position to be able to do it and really sort of make a Raphael van der Vaart signing, if you'd like, and bring him in here before January. And look, the optimistic side of me, because me personally, I prefer to be on that side, you know, half glass, half sort of glass full sort of guy. I'm never going to give up hope. I'm always going to cling on. I'll be there 30 seconds to go, looking at Sky, waiting for that breaking. Could it happen? It's coming, no, it's I coming. Will. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> however, I'm not quite so sure it's going to happen. I think we are sort of, we might look at getting a couple more players, maybe out. Brian Hill, what does his future hold? The fact that he didn't come off the bench against Man City, even though we didn't create any chances, is probably tells you everything you need to know there. Um, so you might see a couple of outgoings, a couple of loans for the under 21s. We we'll definitely do a contract renewal. We always do one of them deadline day. I wake up every time in the morning, boom, so and so signed a new contract. You're like, well, everyone's gone home now for the evening, wrapped up. Look, we'll wait and see what happens. Personally, I wouldn't sit there and hold out hope, but yeah, I, I know I will be, no matter what I say. What's your score out of ten for the trans window, Ash? Would you say six and a half, six? No, six more than six, yeah. David, yeah. I'd I think when I weigh it up in terms of incomings and outgoings, I think you're probably looking at around a six, but I don't think it'd be any more than that, personally. Mm. I mean, I never really thought that we were going to do much in this window. I thought we did something that we've never done before and signed players in the first week of January transfer window, and that was two, you know, got on Timo Werner, Radu Dragushin. I think that since Ange Postacoglu has come in, the first remit was to sort out that defence. We've done that now. You know, we've got top quality defenders at this football club. The fullbacks are looking really good with Destiny and Pedro Porro. We've got amazing options in midfield, albeit Pierre Mohoibia has to be upgraded. It's just that front line um, to get a real Ange Postacoglu team. And I never thought we would get, you know, the the best team, the perfect team in the space of six months under Ange Postacoglu. So I think we're going really well, uh, to be honest. I'm, I've don't have too many complaints. Yeah, maybe we could get one more in the front line. But I think like we're kind of on schedule to where we should be right now. And I'm I'm happy with the way Spurs are going. And everyone's always going to go want more. That's just the natural kind of reaction to things. So I, 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 I'm not disappointed at all, 
to be honest. I'm I'm really happy with the way things are going. I really am. And now the defence is sorted out, now we can just focus on that attack. And whether that comes in the last three days, which I highly doubt, or in the summer, I'm not too bothered either way. I think that we're playing well this season. I think when Sonny comes back, when Saar comes back, you'll see a much different Tottenham second half of the season with Basuma as well. Um, so, look, I think we got to ride out this last six months, this or last half of the season with the players that we do have. Then Ange Postacoglu will have an even better of idea who he wants in the, Jan in the summer transfer window and we can attack that with full force. So, I'm actually really happy with the way things have gone so far. What, what's your take? Um... I'm pretty content with it. I don't think we've had... I think we've had a pretty good window. I think considering the uh, financial restrictions that a lot of clubs are facing, and you clearly see a lot of clubs are struggling to even get any players through the door, the fact we've got two in uh, is positive. Two positions as well that we definitely needed. Um, so that's... All I'm delighted with getting Dragoose in. I'm really happy with the centre-back situation now. I think we've got good depth there, good quality. Really happy with that. That's really good. One on one... I think, it's, I, again, it's one I understood. It's one I, I think makes sense. It's not, I wouldn't say it's one I'm overly delighted with, but I think it's one that I can see why you've done it, considering you look at our forward options right now. We have a, we actually have a lot of options. You know, you've got Solomon and Werner off the left. You've got Son, Richardson up front. You've got Kulusevsky, Brennan Johnson on the right. You've still got players like Brian Hill knocking around as well. With Werner, though, like, when Son comes back into the team, how much is Werner actually going to start, though? We'll see. You know what I mean? We'll like, see. He's a great option to have off the bench. I mean, what we've been asking for all season, have options off the bench. We've had no options whatsoever for the right. whole season. He's versatile. He could play across the front three. So I do expect him to start quite a lot of games, even after um, Son is back. So exactly, gives us an option. Is it smart to go and spend, you know, 100 million or, or 80 million on a forward player in January when you're overpaying? Unless it's someone like, you know, a Nico Williams where it's pretty certain that this guy is going to come in and massively improve you. There's not a lot of those players around um, that are dead certs. You know, it's very difficult. That's why I can see us. That's why we are going for someone like a Noosa, someone with a lot of potential, can come in potentially next season and, and, and be ready to improve us. But right now, um, obviously, he's still very young, got a lot of potential. But I think those are the kind of deals we're looking at. In terms of what I want to point to something that Ash was saying, he was saying he doesn't know what Tottenham want to be. Do they want to be a Brighton, Brentford, where they get... A, a, a potential and sight and you know sell them on or are we buying the ready-made see what i think is we're somewhere in between i think we want to be a brighton and brentford in terms of how we sign players but the reason why brighton and brentford have their model is you know buying these players very young with high potential and selling them on for big fees is because they don't have the revenue streams that we have so they have to sell them on to gain money so they can keep reinvesting that is their model tottenham are very different we don't need to sell to buy in terms of, i know we do a lot we have been but we do we yeah, don't, tell that to daniel yeah, levy know, but we, <laughs> we have a lot of revenue streams we've got um some of our, we have got some of our, we got the highest match day revenue i think in the league now one or second to man united we in terms of revenues overall we have um, we're in the top eight in Europe. Uh, we, we're very very we we have a lot of revenue streams. We don't have to sell players to get our revenue. So when we sign these young players with potential, I don't think the intention is to build them up so we sell them on. I think the intention is to build them up so we can actually use them, so they actually be in our first team and actually be part of the team in the long term. And if they do want to move eventually, okay, we can sell. But the goal isn't to sell. For Brentford and Brighton, that is their goal. The goal is to sell them so they can continue to reinvest in the team and keep everything functioning. So for Tottenham, I think our goal, uh, we're not. I think if we can get a ready-made player for a reasonable price, we'll do it. But I don't think we're going to overpay for players. That's the that's the thing. We're not going to. Apart from obviously, you can argue pay, we're overpaid for Brendan Johnson, but I don't think that's and, and Richarlison. But that isn't the goal. I don't think the goal is to overpay for players. I think we want to find value in the market, and I think we want to buy players with high potential and so they turn into superstars but the but not to sell them to use them to be part of our team in the long term that is the goal and i don't mind that uh, as long as we're doing smart business which we have been doing you know van der ven Vica uh, doggy Saar. these i don't think the goal is to sell these players i think the goal is to have them as part of our team so that's how i see what we're trying to be mm. uh, to be honest i just think in terms of like um sorry david no, I didn't no, mean in I terms of um selling i do agree with you like we're trying to i meant like are we trying to be a, a brighton in terms of having a matoma do you know what i'm trying to say because i'm not saying they're looking to sell matoma that's a player they've obviously kept i mean in terms of like identifying top talent and then just having them so we don't have to spend 
extreme amounts of money to get i think that's what money. you want to do i do think that's what in in general i think that's like that's like the holy grail some but it's very difficult to do that isn't it so sometimes you have to go for a more established player just for if, if you know just so you have certainty but we'll only go for that established player if they're for a reasonable price i think or for a yeah, price yeah, that i think we can afford we're not going to overpay for them yes yeah, so, so so i did that's the reason why i was a bit like what, what are we doing because we, we're not let, we're not going for noosa it's like a few million and I mean, obviously they're saying, oh, the player's choosing for game time, but I, I'm not too convinced about that. I think Ange could have convinced him that, you know, you're going to definitely get game time here. Don't worry about that. But I don't know. It depends what you, your, your thoughts are on the actual personal I, I think it's smart from Noosa to, to guarantee himself minutes in the Premier League week in, week out for Brentford, where, you know, there's not as much competition for places and then there is at Tottenham. You know, he'll be fighting human son on that left wing week in, week out, you know. He's not going to get as much. It's just the reality. Nowhere near as much game time as Tottenham. And he's going to get at Brentford. The kid is 18 years of age. You know, in four years, he's going to get a major money move probably if he if he lives up to his reputation to anywhere he wants in the world. Is, isn't it? If that's the case, are we not now then on to the next one? If that's the case. We got to be. We got to be. We, we have to be. But just in terms of, uh, of something that, uh, you know, the conversation you guys were having there. You know about sort of us going after after youngsters and looking to integrate them uh, you know in the future i do think 100 percent there's an element to that but i do think we have to be careful i do think we're at the point where we have to go out and get that one or two players a bit like what liverpool done where they brought in van dyke allison boom there you go and really sort of pushed them on really gave them that new mentality that sort of new drive and in the big games and eventually helped them get over the line i think we're at that point because right now what we're doing is whether whether we like it or not as Spurs fans, a lot of the players that we sign see Tottenham as a stepping stone. You come here, perform, you're automatically going to a Man City, a Liverpool, or Real Madrid or something like that. A lot of clubs see Tottenham as a stepping stone. And with us bringing in these youngsters, if we don't then go on to push on and win something, what's going to happen is... As soon as Real Madrid need a centre back or Man City need somebody, they'll come straight to Tottenham and look to take an Adoji, a Poro, Romero, Van de Ven, someone like that, and they'll be out of here. But the good thing is we've got a succession plan like a Brighton or Brentford because we've got the next guy in. However, it, we, we have to be able to stop them players from leaving in the first place. And we have to be able to sprinkle it with talent to be able to get over the line first, keep them, and then them youngsters are the next wave coming through to be able to sustain that going forward. If we don't do that, all we're actually doing is realistically what I'm saying is sitting there planning that Man City or Real Madrid will come for an Adoji in the future. And then we don't have to go out and panic and spend 60, 70 million. We'll just slot the next guy in. But we cannot be that selling club anymore. We have to stop that. To take the next step, we have to then sprinkle it with talent, get over the line, and then give these youngsters that time to be able to develop and get themselves ready to come in and be the next wave. Because if not, we're only making problems off our own. Because once an Adoji does go, everyone will be straight away turning around going, Oh, we should have spent a couple of bit a bit of money to get us over the line so that we wouldn't have to lose an Adoji. So although I do agree with the mod, we do have to be careful. I do think there has to be a bit, a bit of balance with it. We do have to make that one or two signings. There you are, go and get your studs over the line. But, but you look at it, we, we, we are not selling club anymore. Well, we sold Harry Kane for 100 million in the summer. Yeah, yeah, Before know, that was Carl bit, Walker. Exactly. Carl Walker I mean, was just six years ago. Carl years Walker, ago. Harry Kane. I mean, when you look at history, I mean, we were a selling club. I don't think we are that same club that we were. I completely agree. But these last five years have been so bad. That's why Harry Kane had to go. I don't think Harry Kane ever wanted to leave this football club, but he felt like he had to leave because the ambition was poor. I think if Harry Kane was still at this football club right now, I think he signs a contract at the end of this season. No, 100%. But that's Harry Kane who came through the academy who has an affiliate with Tottenham Hotspur. The rest mm -hmm. of these players that we're that we're out there praising right now, they don't. We've brought them from other clubs. They don't have that attachment to Tottenham. And players that haven't had that attachment in the past, even players that have had that attachment, have eventually jumped because they've been fed up with not being able to get over the line. And we could very easily end but, up falling into that same trap. Who unless, jumped? Unless but, yeah, exactly. Who jumped? I'm thinking who's jumped because since like the Berbatovs, the Keens and all that, I mean, we haven't had players that have consistently jumped ship. Because we haven't had players to be able to sell to jump ship, you know. We can't yeah, we had jump Dyer, ship. Rose, <laughs> Eric. Dyer. Oh, no, no, but, no, but they were interested. Oh, what I'm talking about is there were clubs interested in them. 
and we and we, they didn't jump ship. What we've got now is we've got a load of players at a certain level that are just below world class. If they develop, they'll go on. What we've had in recent years is a Matt Doherty, Orrier, Dyer, people like that who were never, ever going to be able to make that jump. That's why we've had such problems being able to offload them because even the crap teams haven't really wanted them. But with the talent of players we've got now, eventually they will make that jump. And we've got so many of them that so many teams around Europe would like to be able to push themselves on further. And eventually they will make that jump if we don't sprinkle it with that couple of signings to be able to push us over the edge. You can shoot me now, but in a couple of years' time, you'll all be remembering what I said. No, I I agree with Dave. That's what I said at the start. Why can't we do both? Sprinkle, sprinkle. As you were saying before, David, I agree with you. Balance. Get the potential... And then ones that are actually, because if you've got the piece, if you've got the money and we've got the leg room to do it and actually buy like a weldy that everyone can say, yes, we are actually showing ambition now, then why not? I think it was a great um, business, by the way, by the club to get your doggy on that um, long term deal and saw. Do you know what I'm saying? But remember, guys, money does talk. I don't care what anyone says. When a uh, right price comes over and these agents, they're different breed, they're different level these days. If the agent's convinced, the players convinced and they want the move and and the club put a, enough money down players can get got out got out if they're good enough and we do have a pool of players right now as david was saying that are talented do you know what i mean that real madrid will look at, at, at your doggy mm. or a saw or uh, you know what i'm saying one of those type of players and say look here's 70 million do you know what i'm saying offer the um the player x amount of wages you're going to be paid for the best team in the world like, what are you saying? Do you know what I mean? And Levy's got a bit of a vision. Do I turn down the 70 mil or the 100 mil, whatever it is, for this player? Like, come on. Like, this is football. Every player has his price. But we do need to, like, I think, match it and show these players that, yeah, there is. we don't have to go and Google and Google a player like Danny Rose would say back in the day. You know what I mean? I have to go on YouTube and figure out who this guy is. We need a player that everyone knows now. And uh, But I do hear what Sim's saying. I, I know I do get it, like, with the whole, the players that have potential, it's like a mix mash because we got some players that were bought in the Premiership, Richarlison being one, Brendan Johnson being another. But Madison. again, Madison, like we don't want any question marks. We want to play like that. Like, yeah, that guy is quality. Bring him. Add it to the ones that were like, oh, we didn't know about that player. Look, he's called Vicario. We didn't know about. You know what I'm saying? Your doggy was question mark. Like, look how well they've turned out. But like, let's marry that now with someone that has got that level and has had that experience at that top level that could just jump into our team and take us to the level. Yeah, we don't but, want for, to be... but in January, you're paying double for those kind of players. Well, in January, I'm talking about long term now. I'm just saying, it, okay. in, I'm, talking about long term. I'm talking about long term because that's how it, that's how it feels. The trajectory of the club has been going in the last few seasons, like last three or four seasons. We haven't gone that extra step to get that, like, you know, well beater in. But yeah, in January, that's what I'm saying. In January, I'm like, look, it is what it is, bro. Like, I'm not I think we're so that. close to being there, though, aren't we? We're so oh, we're close not, to not. being there. Oh, sprinkle the a few more line. big, sprinkle a few more big talents in the front line. Get a big replacement for Hoybier, and we're going to be ready to fight for the title next season. Yeah, yeah. That, that look, we're we're not we're not far away, and this is why I'm saying it. I know a lot of people would say it's negative, but I'm not. I'm, I'm sort of saying it because we're not that far away. And in order to make that next jump, that's what has to happen. You know, you have to sprinkle it with that bit of talent. Now, I'm not sitting here demanding it this January. Very unlikely it's going to happen. But come the summer, we'll know exactly what the ambition is. Do they go and do that? Do mm. they not? So we'll wait and see then. Absolutely. But I think that is all we have time for today. Big up to Ash Matty, big up for David, big up to you guys in the chat as well. Thank you all for joining us today. Ash, let the people know where they can find you, my friend. You can find me at South Few Coys, man. And once again, thanks for having me on, guys. Big up to you guys in the chat for making the show, for people at home viewing in, listeners as well. Um, yeah, my next show is tomorrow. Uh, I'll do like basically like last three days we just look at a few players to say like could we could we do you know what i mean i like to dream a lot i'm a bit of a dreamer like, who's on uh, the agenda ash who's on the agenda definitely gonna get inverts now i'm joking now <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what saying that i might i might look at kimmich i'm not gonna lie let a boy dream in it let a boy dream, innit? Let, allow me, innit? Let a boy dream. There's going to be a few other players, um, Anderson being one. Mbappe's got six months left on his deal. Check him out. <laughs> <laughs>
Bro, bro. But yeah, I'm going to look at a few players that we actually are linked with and we're going to do like a little video analysis of them. Um, but yeah, man, guys, tune in, tune in. David, on the Irish Hotspur, everyone knows where to go, but what's coming up on the Irish Hotspur this week? Um, well, tomorrow, you know, every Monday and Tuesday, I sort of drop a loan report after we can on how players get on, so check that out. And then tomorrow, I'll be dropping one about all the academy news over the last week and bringing it to you, so check that out. And then in terms of going forward after that, oh, I'll be watching the under-21 in cup action tomorrow night as well. So um, come and join me for that. Apart from that, your boy will just be vibing, chilling out and doing what he wants to do. So if you want to get with that, come over and subscribe. Big Ashley Phillips report coming tomorrow, yeah? <laughs> I love I look Ashley Phillips I, I think he's going to be uh, tremendous for Tottenham going forward in the future just uh, at Plymouth just work on his sort of on the ball ability get a bit more uh, consistent with that we've got a star on our hands yeah you think it's a green screen behind it's a Plymouth flag <laughs> <laughs> green army <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah thank you all so much for coming on today we'll see you all very soon like subscribe and comment and as always come, come on, on you Spurs, Spurs.